So I'm not sure if everybody's been paying attention to the news this week, but if you have, you may have noticed that Donald Trump and 18 of his good buddies were indicted in the state of Georgia this week. Uh, the crimes are all over the place. The big one obviously is Rico and joining me to talk about this as he does every time Trump gets indicted, which almost means he's pretty much a co-host of ring of fire at this point <laughs> I was <gonna> say. <laughs> is Cliff Schechter, the host of the blue amp channel on YouTube. He is also an author. He's a political strategist. He is an advertising guru. Cliff, uh, thanks for coming back as usual. Anytime Trump gets in trouble, you're the best guy to talk to. So again, you're, you're on a lot and we'll probably have you well, a I'm lot excited more. excited then because <laughs> I hear he's now being investigated for the, the elect, the, uh, sort of fake elector scheme in Arizona too. Yeah. So we, maybe we'll get an indictment out of there and, and then I can come back on your show again. I'm, I may get a seat right next to you. It's awesome. <laughs> I'm going to have to go ahead and just book you a plane ticket. Uh, cause his legal problems are not going away. And, and look, I, I think you and I both fully agree on this. What we saw come out of Georgia this week is probably the most intense. It definitely seems to be one of the most thorough, not just because yeah. of what they hit Trump with, but because Fonnie Willis says, you know what? I'm not going to just get Trump. I'm getting everybody. And this was the big one. This one, I really feel, has the most power, has the most potential. And it's also been the most fun because Trump's melting down worse than ever. Yes. I mean, a black woman... You know, it, it, he did the same thing when Letitia Wright came after him. That is the worst of all sins. If she came, came out, you know, and maybe said she was a lesbian too, that could maybe make it a step worse for Trump. Like any, the more minority groups you are, um, but she's incredible. Um, and I'm going to say that seriously, that's not just, I mean, what she did here using the RICO law, um, pause for a second to enjoy the irony of the fact that Rudy Giuliani built his career in New York, which of course was all about getting media attention so he could run for mayor and uh, going after the five families before, of course, he teamed up with mobsters like Bernie Carrick and Donald Trump. Uh, so it was all fraud. But the original thing he used to take down the mob families was Rico. So he was one of the pioneering folks to use it. So the irony is, is, is chef's kiss. But I think it's huge that people that have been major folks in political life, Mark Meadows, former congressman, chief of staff, Rudy Giuliani, mayor of New York, and, you know, Trump lawyer, if you want to call him that, um, Sidney Powell, former federal prosecutor, that, that people who have occupied high stations, you know, on, on the right side of the law, you know, at least they should have been, are now being held accountable. Because again, as much as it's important that Trump is held accountable for everything, if it's just him, and all these folks who conspired with him and worked with him and what, you know, are not held accountable, they'll do it again. You know, and so I'll say quickly, my one issue still is that we have not seen any current members of the Senate and the House. We have abundant evidence that Senator Mike Lee was plotting with Trump, you know, uh, on January 6th. We have abundant evidence that Tommy Tuberville from that call that Rudy Giuliani made because he's a moron to a journalist's number by mistake and left the whole plan on their voicemail. We've abundant evidence that Ted Cruz <laughs> from stuff we've got. So, you know, the truth of the matter is, is that I, I need, we need to start seeing like what happened after Lincoln, where they held senator senators and congressmen who were insurrectionists accountable. That's my only thing so far that I'm not yet pleased with, but hoping for. And, and, you know, on that note, I will add, obviously, another person, uh, one who actually had to testify in front of Willis's grand jury, Lindsey Graham. And yep. Lindsey, Lindsey Graham has been out there this week uh, going on Fox News all the time. Almost seems like the dude's got a guilty conscience. Uh, Overcompensating, you'd say? It, it really seems like Lindsey Graham is trying to kind of have it go, th uh, go both ways because we know you testified. We know you fought it. You did. Oh, you did such a good job fighting it, Lindsay. But ultimately, oh, you like when you went rug shopping with McCain in Iraq back in the day, yeah. you really took you really took some chances there, Lindsay. Exactly. Sorry, that's so, an old one from when I wrote my book. I'll never forget that. Go ahead. So, so we know that Lindsey Graham had to talk, and conspicuously, or maybe not conspicuously, Lindsey Graham's name, as far as I've seen, is not mentioned anywhere in that indictment. So yeah, it does. I mean, again, you, you know, you're sitting there right now at an actual law firm with actual very smart lawyers. So I'm going to say that, you know, a lot more about this than I do. Uh, I have plenty of friends who are lawyers, a few federal, former federal prosecutors. 
um, it, it, it does seem very suspicious. Everybody said, oh, it's Mark Meadows. But Meadows got indicted. <laughs> Lindsay didn't, which makes you think somebody on the inside was feeding information. And anybody knows anything about old Lindsay? Somebody, would they compare him to? He's like a not a clown fish, one of the ones that follows the other one around and cleans their teeth out for uh, them. Like, well, like a, a like a remora, basically. Yes, like he did that with McCain, and then McCain was going, he needed somebody else to attach him to, so it was Trump. And now Trump's going down, you know, he's looking for his next person, and he probably threw Trump overboard. Who do I attach myself to now? So I, so I'm pretty suspicious that, that, that Lindsey did do that, and I'm hoping that will come out, oh, because the, the firestorm that will come out of uh, – out of Mar-a-Lago or whatever prison cell Trump is hopefully sitting in will be will just be delicious, really delicious. You know, and, and it is funny, too, because Lindsey Graham, obviously, uh, he's the one who, uh, after all the other Trump indictments, he immediately went running to Fox News. Several times he openly wept on Fox News like he, he got choked up and was, you know, crying because tell, tell, oh my dear lord, yeah, my dear lord, telling people you've got to give him money to fight this. The poor guy. Uh, but then suddenly now he's back out there again, but Lindsay, what, what did you say when you test it? Why are you not even bringing up the fact that you talk to them? Because you actually have that right. Lindsay, you talk to them. Why don't you go on yep. Fox news and, and say what they asked you? Why don't you on, spill the beans? Cause you have them. You could tell us everything. You're, you're not beholden to a degree of silence unless of course, You've signed some kind of agreement in which case, right. uh oh, it's all going to come out. Like, that's the funny part. It will eventually come out when the trial happens. And maybe Lindsay did flip. Maybe he kept his mouth shut. But either way, I think there's far more to the Lindsey Graham story uh, than we know about right now. And we will find out eventually. Well, I'd say it reminds me of the Republican Party writ large, right? They never can look beyond the horizon. All they can do is Jeff Flake and Corker and, you know, just a long list of the Mike Pence right now. All they can do is be <laughs> cowards when it comes to Trump and feel like, oh, he'll go away. Something will take him down. Oh, he'll lose in the primaries. You know, I don't need to attack him. Oh, he'll get himself. You know, that one quote that's been going around from some senator who was like, look, the guy's not going to. It was a, a, you know, of course, the senator didn't give their name. And the New York Times, oh, look, why can't we humor him on this election stuff? It's not like he's going to try to overthrow the government or anything. I mean, just he'll go away on his own. Like, that's been their attitude this whole time. They can't seem to see 10 miles in the future. And Lindsay right now, it's the same deal. It's like, dude. Get out ahead of it, you idiot, because it's going to come out and it's not like no one's going to figure this out. So you may want to you may want to start planning how you're going to you're going to frame it now ahead of time, Linz. <laughs> yeah, because it's it's probably not going to be pretty. And, <clears throat> you know, I, another you know funny thing that came out this week that ties right back into this is the fact that you've got uh, uh, Sidney Powell, Rudy Giuliani and John Eastman uh, and Kenneth Chesbro. Uh, all indicted in Georgia. And now it's revealed that Trump never even paid them for the legal work, you know, legal work in quotation marks uh, that they did for him. So they got indicted for their client and didn't even get paid for it. I mean, that is just insult to injury. For all they got folks. was that lousy t-shirt. <laughs> uh, you, you know, like, <laughs> I mean, fair and like, you know, we've been in this business a while, my friend. And every time you think you've seen stupider, they're stupider yet to come. I mean, Donald Trump was a man, everybody knew what he was. Nobody had any questions of what this guy was. Loyalty always went one way. You could talk to a billion former, you know, uh, different officers at his companies, employees, wives, you know, <laughs> like this is a guy that, that loyalty is one way. The minute he doesn't need you, he will drop you. These, how many lawyers did he not pay? How many towns did he go in and use their resources and not pay? Like these folks thought he was going to pay them. And my favorite thing about all of this is Jenna Ellis now has a crowdfunding, like a GoFundMe set up because she she's one of the ones who rejected Trump initially, draw, draw, jumped onto the Trump trained so ridiculously that she got herself indicted for him. She's also an evil, awful person who said vicious things about the LGBTQ community. I have roughly this much, if I can get my fingers any closer, sympathy for her. Um, and now she has no money. And, and she went to Trump and Trump's like, get lost. I'm not giving you any money. Uh, so so she's doing, she's literally crowdfunding, you know. Uh, I mean, that's where they're at. Like, that's what these people did to themselves for this 
bloated, you know, cartoonish Dorito. And, and, you know, Jenna Ellis is not, uh, I mean, she's not, certainly not as old as any of these other Trump lawyers. You know, I mean, John Eastman, Rudy Giuliani, Sidney Powell, uh, they had made money throughout yep. their career. Jenna Ellis had actually not hit that point yet. So it's not like she's the kind of lawyer that is sitting on, oh, well, I've got that big settlement money, you know, from from all the cases I've tried. She right. She simply doesn't have it. And, and that, obviously, if Trump says, well, I'm going to stick it to you by not paying your legal bills, and she says, well, I've only raised 10 grand from give, send, go, I, I can't fight this. I'm going to have to start talking. So Trump thinks he's sticking it to her, but what he's really doing is giving her basically the only option, which is you're going to have to flip. If you don't want right. to spend the minimum of five years in jail on those RICO charges, because that's what they carry, you're going to have to start singing because for $10,000, you're going to be able to hire a lawyer for about four days if you're lucky. Correct. Or actually half a day for Rudy Giuliani. Maybe she can get a public defendant like like most Americans have to deal with because we won't actually spend the amount of money we should spend to give people the, the top legal representation they should get. It, Maybe that exactly. would be the best karma. And I'm not saying public defenders are very good lawyers often. They just have a billion cases and no time to spend on them. You know, in her case, you're right. She's 38 or 39 or something. And let's be honest here. She's never going to be a lawyer again. Her legal career is done. She was censured by the state of Colorado uh, and had to admit 10 times that she under oath in Colorado that she lied uh, about things she said on TV, went directly against ethical, the ethics of the bar. And so she's censured there. And, you know, if she hasn't been disbarred, will be. And then, you know, she's now been indicted, which is even worse. <laughs> and could, and if she, even if she doesn't somehow sneaks away from spending time in prison, she will have a record. So here's the thing. She has to turn on Trump. I mean, I don't know how she doesn't. But you know what? Like, let her make her own. She's done such a bang up job of making great decisions the past six or seven years. <laughs> let her make her own decision on this one. <laughs> right. And the funniest part about it, I, I hate to just pile on to Jenna Ellis. No, but, pile on to Jenna Ellis. But also, she, she she's awful. It. Yeah. Like, she called Pete Buttigieg and Jason Buttigieg perverts for, for adopting a child. Please pile on. Yeah. Her. Well, you know, she makes the decision finally like, well, I'm going to be done with Trump and I'm going to go hitch my wagon to the new winner, the new face of the Republican Party, <laughs> Ron DeSantis. Let's ride this Ron train all the way to D.C. And now, oh, my God, that, that's the biggest disaster since Scott Walker running for president. So she's not. I'd say since the Hindenburg, winners. perhaps, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, like, here's the thing. Can I admit this to you? Like, let's not tell anybody else. This is just me and you talking. I love Ron DeSantis' presidential campaign. <laughs> I have rarely had so much fun to like watch a robot be like, hi, little child. Is there too much sugar in there for you to eat? I mean, watching him try to relate to other humans, watching him, that video of him where he's like, so Ron, what do you think about your poll numbers falling? And he's like, you know, like wiping his spit in his face and like, you know, <laughs> you know I mean, like this guy is gold. I, I have to believe it's performance art. It can't be real. That's all I have to say. <laughs> it's it, it really is such a spectacular uh, uh, meltdown that we've seen with that campaign. And even the video clip from earlier this week, you know, where uh, his wife, Casey, is is talking to was a Good Morning America or the Today Show, the little fluff right. piece. And she's like, oh, when I was sick, he did a good job. He picked up my my kids. Like, what oh are what my. are you implying your kids? You, well, first of all, your kids. So that's kind of interesting. <laughs> Second of all, you picked up the kids. <laughs> I mean, do you get a medal? Did you take out the garbage, too? Wait, wait, wait. Did you turn all the lights off in the house before you guys left? <laughs> I mean, what is it we're giving this guy credit for now? <laughs> I mean, picked up the kids. He's such a wonderful husband that he picked up the kids. I'll be picking up my younger son from his soccer practice today at, at 430 because I'm apparently the most amazing dad of all time. Exactly. We got to get, we got to get you on good morning America. I mean, Hey, if you throw yes. in a load of laundry today too, then, Oh, oh my, my God. God, like you're, you, you are the next president of the United States. Then at that point, like I had no idea that I was qualified <laughs> to be president, that, that all I had to do is like lick my face in front of people, uh, walk around in white booties, be called a meatball and do the laundry and I'd be all set. <laughs> You know, we also, uh, since we're, you know, talking about Trump's legal problems, uh, we got to talk about what happened last Friday, because at first I was angry 
But now I get it. Okay, so for everybody that hasn't been paying attention, just FYI, last Friday, obviously, uh, we had the hearing with Judge Tanya Chutkin uh, in D.C. She was obviously not happy about Trump's post on True Social the week before, where he said, if you go after me, I'm going to come after you. His lawyers went in, the DOJ wanted a protective order, and the judge didn't really give the protective order. All she did was reiterate, right. you can't intimidate, you cannot harass, you cannot harangue, you cannot taint the jury pool. And I was annoyed. I, I was, you know, because I was thinking, listen, this guy's obviously going to do this. This is not a great decision. But correct. she put a little caveat in there. And it's that caveat that is almost a trap for Donald Trump. But she's telling him, I, I've put a trap out here for you. Because she said, listen, though, I'm not going to shut you up, but I will be paying attention. And if you continue, then I've got no choice than to go ahead and do a speedy trial. DOJ wants it January 2nd. If you don't shut up, I'll see you January 2nd, basically, is what she said. Yep. And that, I mean, that, that is, is the perfect threat because this man, the only way he stays out of prison right now and keeps raising grifty money at the same level he is, is with his run for office. And again, the, the moment the Republican Party, man, this is, it's been 30 years in the making, and especially the last sort of five to 10 years of the radicalization of this party that was once too conservative, but a legitimate party in American politics. You know, and we're getting that point. You may have seen that poll yesterday where 64% of Americans are now saying they either probably or definitely will not vote for, for uh, Donald Trump for president. And so, and, but among the base, He's beloved. So they're finally that vice grip has been getting worse and worse every couple of years, but they are now trapped in it where he, where he, he, he needs that that base. He has to have them to go. He can't piss them off. Right. But that means the things he needs to say to keep them all frothed up about conspiracies and Democrats killing babies and, you know, whatever garbage he you know, Mexicans being raped is, I don't know, whatever it is, he feels like saying that. Thing. These are all the things that make everybody else recoil from him. And he's going to keep getting indicted. And the Fonnie Willis thing has just happened. We haven't had all the media saturation yet. So it's sort of like he it looks like he will be their nominee unless now there's some people talking about the 14th Amendment and not, you know, Lawrence Lessig and others and not allowing him saying he can't. But I'm, I'm of the mind, I, you know, I don't know where you are, where I want him to be their nominee and get crushed. Yeah. Imagine him coming into swing seats in Florida and Ohio and Pennsylvania and Michigan and these places, because he doesn't care about anybody but himself. They'll tell him to stay away, but he won't. And he'll come in and, and the stink of his lies and his corruption is going to be attached to every swing candidate that they run. Go for it, guys. See, see, that's and I don't think the Republican there are obviously there's some who realize that Mitch McConnell uh, in his more lucid moments, he does understand that. And I do think to a degree Kevin McCarthy does, but he's already sold his soul to the point where he can't Correct. speak about it. So you hear the whispers where plenty of Republicans do understand it, but there's not right. enough of them to stop it. So you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. You've got Donald Trump because he has that nomination on lockdown with the Republican base, not just the MAGA part of the base, but with the overall Republican base. But then you look at all these other polls and I want to bring this up because this poll annoyed the hell out of me when it came out two weeks ago, that New York Times poll. Oh, look, yeah. Biden and Trump are both at 43%. What a shock from the New York Times. Did you know on the day they released that poll, they put out the article on the poll. That's article number one. Throughout the rest of the day, they did four more articles in one day about that poll. And that tells you everything you need to know that this poll is garbage, but they're creating a horse race where one does not exist because the yep. horse race sells advertising. The horse race gets the eyeballs. If you say, look, Biden's going to win in a blowout, people don't tune in anymore. So they created it and they pushed the hell out of it with five articles in 24 hours. And, and it's total BS because no other it, it poll has replicated those results. It was crap. I'm so sick of, you know, people use this phrase and they, I still see some using it less so, which is they didn't learn anything from blah, 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 blah. And it, that's what gets me angry. <laughs> they learned anything they wanted to learn. They're not stupid people. They don't want to learn. They want to make money off of this guy. They want to make money and keep their advertisers happy. They don't seem to care about democracy. They're kind of agnostic about it. And so 
you know, I mean, the New York Times is, is absolute garbage. There's some other good coverage, I would say, in science and foreign affairs. I don't care. I ended my, my digital subscription. I'm trying to remember which moment it was, but one of those moments in an Ohio diner where, you know, <laughs> let's talk to these three, these three fly fishermen from, you know, and I finally was like, I'm not doing this anymore. And I will never subscribe <laughs> to that newspaper again. Absolute garbage. And no one should take it seriously, honestly. They're, at least their political coverage. They've got some other things, I'll admit, are still very good. But you should never, ever take any political coverage in the New York Times at face value because there's a million other reasons they're doing it. None of those reasons are to edify you. It's to make a publisher happy. It's to both sides something. It's to sell copies. It's whatever. It's not so that you will learn more. You, you, you do realize that both of us kind of sound like Donald Trump right now. I'm out here complaining that these polls are totally fake. You're attacking the New York Times. I mean, we just need to put on our MAGA hats and get it over with. We do. <laughs> Let's go dance in them. Hey, look, I've never said the media are the enemy of the people. I've said the media are an essential function in our Constitution, <laughs> many of whom are failing. Yeah. And I make sure to call out the John Harwoods and the Brian Carums and the Will Bunches and the Rex Hubkeys, and these are all people that write for major newspapers or mainstream publications who are doing an incredible job. Jonathan Capehart at The Post, Craig Sargent, they're out there. So I'm never about media is the enemy, all media is evil. It's that the New York Times, this institution that you have to understand, you're in Pensacola, I'm in Cincinnati, we both understand that what the New York Times chooses to prioritize influences newspapers around the country. It sends a signal that this is important. They corrupt the coverage here in Cincinnati with what they do. So I, do I specifically hate them and think they've betrayed their oath? Absolutely. Am I anti-media? No, I'm pro-media and that the media should do its sorry to cut that out, job and like and, and actually tell people the truth about what's going on. And, and, and I agree 100 percent. We got to get rid of the fake news. No, uh, but, <laughs> but, but but listen. Fake oh. news, <laughs> fake. The FBI is on a witch hunt for me and Farron. That's why we're hiding. Okay, go ahead. Uh, so we've only got just a couple minutes left here, but but I do want to just kind of wrap everything up in a nice little bow here. What do you think with all of these, you know, the four, four and a half indictments, because you got to count the superseding indictment as, you know, kind of a half its own little thing. 91 yep. counts, 700 and se uh, 727 possible years in prison. Um, they're just going to have to leave a skeleton sitting in a cell for... A judge has actually used the words, Donald Trump is a rapist, has used those words, exactly. has called him a rapist. So where do you see this landing in the, in the general election? Not necessarily the primaries, but if Trump is the nominee... Could we be looking at a guy that's a convicted felon sitting in a jail cell on the top of their ticket? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I never would have said that 10 years ago. But but the, again, you said that there are people beyond the base that support Trump. That is true. But that hardcore Republican base, whatever it is, I mean, it's it, there's a lot in that party. You know, it's just overall in the country, but 30, 40, 50, maybe 60 percent of that party. They're, they're not they have been their minds have been turned to mush by a combination of Trump and Fox News and the NRA and the, you know, and some of them maybe started off at different levels of insane, but they reality means nothing. And Donald Trump could just say, I'll be out of prison tomorrow. It's all fake. They just put me here for a day and they'd be like, okay. So, I mean, I think a very realistic scenario is we've got somebody sitting in prison who's their nominee. I think a very realistic scenario is, you know, this guy's running and again, 30, 35% of the country supports him. I mean, if ever we could make up and, and fix all of our problems, of which there are many. It would be Trump at the top of the ticket, us winning a blowout type election where we take local seats. I saw that Phil Ayer, if you, however you pronounce his name, I know he's only one and other people might get in, but it shows you he doesn't have name recognition in Florida at this point. And he's 46, 44 up on Rick Scott because everyone hates Rick Scott. That's a seat that's winnable. Colin Allred against, against Ted Cruz in Texas. If they drop five to 10%, it puts all new sorts of places in play. So that's what we need if we're going to take on climate change and gun massacres and reinstate Roe and protect the LGBTQ community and take care of immigrants and make them a part of our society in, in a humane way and all the other things we need to get done, a higher minimum wage and better working conditions. All that comes through an overwhelming win. And so, hey, I hope he's sitting in a, in a prison cell and he's their nominee. Good for him. The the only threat to Biden in 2024 in that election 
is Democrats staying home. Correct. That, th- and that is a real danger because you've, you've got, you know, all these people. There's no difference between the Democrats and the Republicans. That crap has pissed me off so much in recent weeks because, again, I'm sitting in Florida. I am watching the attacks on the LGBTQ community. I'm seeing it firsthand. I'm seeing the attacks on African-Americans. I'm seeing the book banning. I'm seeing the fascism. Don't you dare tell me there's not a breath of daylight between the two parties. We had an 11-year-old who had to leave a state to get an abortion here in Ohio because she was raped and did not have that right. Honestly, I use swear words to tell them the people who say that kind of stuff what to do, but I don't want to make your editing job harder. <laughs> they, 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 we need to rid ourselves of There's such a difference. It couldn't even be comparable. And, and what Joe Biden's done, and I don't have the time to talk about it, but it's the one year anniversary of the Inflation Reduction Act yesterday. Inflation cut by more than half. Largest investment in climate uh, uh, change prevention, you know, in the history of the country. We finally, after a, a, a generation of trying, got the right to, for Medicare to no, negotiate prescription drug prices. So they came down all under that act. All right. So I'm sorry, folks. Joe Biden may not be someone you want to marry. He may not be your perfect grandpa. But democracy is about being a mature adult and looking at the two options and saying, gee, which one's better? This one is so clear with he is having an LBJ or FDR like domestic record that like I can't even fathom that. No, let's put the let's put crazy pants back in the office (laughs) who stares up at eclipses without glasses on and tells you to inject bleach. That's the guy we want. (laughs) Yeah. If you're saying there's no daylight between the two, then trust me, you're definitely not on the left. Listen, Cliff, we're out of time. Where can everybody find you? All right, find me on YouTube at C Schechter, C S C H E C T E R. We just passed 25,000 subscribers. It's like one eighth of or 10th or 12th of what Farron has, but damn it, we're, we're, we're moving up. Please find me there. You can find me at Cliff D Schechter on uh, threads where I'm trying to spend more time if they ever put it on their desktop. I'm still on Twitter at Cliff Schechter because I kind of have to be. And uh, find me one of those places. But YouTube is best, and you guys are awesome. And keep growing Farron's show because we need that voice out there. Thank you, Cliff. (laughs) Always great talking to you. I guess I'll talk to you next time he's indicted, which probably could happen again soon. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Thanks, man. Thanks for watching everyone. And well, here comes the awkward part at the end of the video where I ask you to like, comment, and share, and subscribe for more content from Ring of Fire. Also, you should consider becoming a member for some exclusive content and perks, including early access videos and exclusive videos. Check out the link in the description.